Hi, everyone. Um, really great to be here today. Um, two quick points before I start. One, I've never seen my face that big before, and it is slightly horrifying. And number two, I did actually get ChatGPT to write my talk title, because, as you know, lawyers, creative flair, not a happy marriage most of the time. And this is what it came up with. Regulating AI, the death of innovation. So I think I get the impression that ChatGPT is not looking forward to the world of regulation, but I thought it was quite a, uh, quite a punchy title to go with. So before I kick off, very briefly about me. So I am actually an interactive entertainment lawyer by trade, so predominantly kind of existing in video games, esports, the metaverse, but as we've seen in some of the previous talks, these are all industries that have a lot of AI, have been playing with AI for a long time, and a lot of my job nowadays is actually helping brands get into those spaces, understand that tech. So this is quite a happy marriage for me, this particular conference today. So a bit about Wigan as well. Media and entertainment tech law firm, UK and EU based. I'm naturally based in the UK. So 10 minutes of law, going to blast you with it, hopefully not bore you too much and give you a few kind of things to take away. First kind of part of my talk, we'll be talking a bit about um, the UK government's approach to regulating AI and what that might mean for you guys. And then, essentially, a few kind of top tips, legal issues that we are seeing, particularly for brands and advertisers looking to go into the AI space or use AI. So, pro-innovation approach, which is, I think, what ChatGPT caught on to when I put in my little prompt um, a few weeks ago. So, it's been a very interesting couple of months in terms of the UK government looking at the AI space. The kind of key document right now is the white paper that they released on AI at the end of March. And Rishi Sunak, I mean, I think pretty much yesterday met with OpenAI, um, Anthropic, and DeepMind yesterday to talk about some of these issues. So this is very much a hot topic for the UK government at the moment. They are looking at it very, very intently. Now, the approach that we have taken in the UK more broadly is what I talk about in the third bullet point there, which is essentially no new law at the moment. Well, hey, no new laws, great. What we're going for instead is essentially a broad framework that all the different regulators that we have already can kind of pin onto and go, okay, if I'm broadly meeting as a regulator these five principles that I've paraphrased on the board there, then hopefully we're heading in the right direction. I think the thing that the UK government is most concerned about is ultimately, if we come in and legislate first, we are gonna essentially make it much more difficult for AI to innovate and actually for companies to do interesting things with AI. The new Department of Science, Innovation and Technology, which was set up at the start of this year, governmental department, this spun out originally out of our culture, media and sport department, I think goes to show that ultimately the UK government is very intent on making, I think the phrase is, the UK a science and technology superpower by 2030. So we are part of that magical journey. What to look out for? So right now the white paper I think is it's about 260 pages, and a lot of it is, these are the stuff we need to do, these are the frameworks we need to make, and these are the regulators that we need to get involved. So right now, not actually that much to hang your hat on. But over the next 12 to 24 months, that roadmap I reference in the bottom right corner of the screen is something to keep an eye on. Ultimately, there is a lot of discussions going on at the moment, so it's important to kind of keep your eyes on all these things and get involved. The AI Standards Hub is referenced quite a lot in the white paper. This is a hub that is um, spearheaded by the Alan Turing Institute. They're running some really cool events over the next five, five to six months. I think there's one coming up, I think even in a couple of weeks, which is about the public perception of AI. So I think actually brands and advertisers might find those kind of sessions quite useful in terms of understanding what consumers think about AI, what concerns they have, what things they're excited about, and a bunch of other interesting stuff. The Digital Regulation Cooperation Forum, also known as the DRCF, are a group of four regulators in the UK that essentially focus on different areas of digital regulation. They are going to be key in terms of driving the AI regulation conversation over the next couple of years. Again, they also run some really interesting events. I think they run events on, I think, metaverse regulation, video games, streaming, all in the last year. However, they are absolutely woeful at marketing these. So if there are any marketing agencies out there that'd like to uh, get some governmental work, these guys need serious help. The launch of the AI sandbox, I think, is really interesting as well, and it's something that the UK does have experience with. Right now, our data protection regulator, the ICO, 
has a privacy sandbox that is specifically built around data protection issues. But the idea is that all these regulators are going to come together and essentially help companies that do want to do interesting things with AI to get the advice they need, work out the way forward, and ultimately have a dialogue with government before things either get out of hand and they think, oh, you've broken a law, or ultimately stifle innovation, which is not what we want. I think I've covered everything there. So, key legal issues for brands and advertisers to be aware of right now. As I said, the issue is that there is a lot of uncertainty at the moment. The great news about this kind of broad framework that the government is proposing is that it does allow for a lot of flexibility, but the flip side of that is uncertainty, not knowing the direction of travel, and ultimately, the government will be constantly playing catch-up to innovators and AI companies out there. But these are some of the ones we've seen most recently. So, generative AI and social media disclosures. Now, this was something that was actually referenced in the Valance report, which was very, very, very influential for the eventual white paper that was published. And in that Valance report, they said, we recommend that a code of practice is introduced whereby, essentially, altered images or products that are used making generative AI should be disclosed to the end user. Now, I'm sure most of you know here about influencer marketing and all the rules there are around disclosure of uh, paid influencer advertising and the like. It feels like we are going potentially in a similar direction of travel there. The issue is, is that it didn't end up in the white paper, so we've kind of gone quiet in the UK. But as always with these things, the platforms will probably get ahead of legislators. So TikTok announced relatively recently that it is developing tools around generative AI disclosure. So even if the law is not making you do it, the platforms may end up making you do it anyway. The lack of algorithmic auditing standards. Now, this is broader than AI. And ultimately, it can affect lots of different kinds of machine learning and technology out there. But the issue is, is that right now, it's very difficult for companies, AI vendors, suppliers to actually understand what it is they need to do to be ethical, to comply with the law, and ultimately, whether or not the government can actually understand, understand the auditing process and have insight on what does and doesn't matter. Now, the last time the UK government released anything very meaningful about algorithmic auditing was... I think it was 2019, which, to be quite frank, is ancient history at this point. It's very out of date. It doesn't really do what it needs to do. So, again, the Digital Regulation Cooperation Forum that I mentioned earlier, they are currently consulting on this particular issue. I think they released the discussion paper last September, so this is something that's still very much in the works at the moment. But the hope is that, actually, once we know more about what is and isn't appropriate to train AI on regarding data or content or other types of assets, then it will hopefully make it easier for everyone to understand where they stand. IP ownership and generative AI. Now, this is one that we get asked on a lot at the moment because we've got clients that are obviously wanting to use AI to make things, to put their own information in, to spit something out at the other end. But ultimately, the way that intellectual property works at the moment means that this is actually quite an uncertain issue. So in the UK, for example, we do have laws around computer-generated works and who, is owned that, who owns that work. Right now, the person who owns a generative AI-made work is someone who arranged it. Now, there is no guidance about who arranged it is. Is it the person who made the tool? Is it the person who put the stuff into the tool? Is it the person managing the tool or managing the funding for that tool? We don't know. So right now, a lot of gray areas in terms of if a generative AI tool spits out something, and it's new and exciting and interesting, who actually owns that? The US, as a good example of, on the counterparts, have gone as far as to say, right now under US copyright law, no one has any copyright on anything that comes out of a generative AI tool. So a pretty extreme approach, and I think ultimately that will change over time, but it just goes to show just across those two different countries that there's stuff that we need to get on top of there. Now, children, I've put it's a bit of a bolt on at the end, to be quite frank, but... If anyone uh, deals with policy or legal issues and the current UK government, they will know that children is pretty much their number one priority across a lot of different mandates. Um, I think it was Theresa May a couple of years ago said, you know, we want the UK the safest place to be for children online in the world. And this is something that has followed through very, very consistently a lot across a lot of different political mandates. So if you're doing anything AI or child related, expect a call from one of the four regulators I mentioned, or the government, because they will be very interested to know what you're doing. Now, a couple of, I guess, just getting ahead of the curves, which spins off my last slide. Um, if you're thinking about partnering with an AI partner, do your due diligence. 
we had a client come up to us saying that they were really excited about this AI partner that they met and they really wanted to part with them. They were going to send them some money to do a trial, etc. We did a bit of digging. Turns out it was just some bloke in Panama who didn't have any tool to his name. So I wouldn't say it's as bad as the kind of crypto NFT scene was a couple of years ago in terms of just shell companies popping up in weird locations. But there are people out there trying to pull a fast one. Please be careful. <laughs> link, to my, link to that point is my second box just on the slides there, is how do partners measure compliance? Now, a lot of AI companies are SMEs, and ultimately, they are not going to have all the answers. No one has all the answers at the moment. But it's good to know whether or not the partner is alive to these issues that I'm talking about. Are they, do they have it in the back of their minds? Are they talking about it at board meetings, et cetera? Even better, understanding who is on the board, who the advisors are, who the investors are, will probably tell you a lot about ultimately what the company feels about these issues. And then finally, staff training and AI use policies. I think it's really important in your company to identify who is most likely to be using AI or want to use AI and trying to have some internal guardrails around it. It's definitely not a case where we can say we're not using AI at all, but I think it's really important to understand, you know, you don't want necessarily your marketeer or your, you know, your brand pumping generative AI full of loads of confidential information. So even just having that documented it, training, I think is really, really important at this stage. So I'll just have a couple of key take, another couple of key takeaways. So one, I think it was John at the start of the day who said, you know, it's very easy to get left behind. And I think actually the kind of broad message from the UK government is we should be having fun. We should be trying stuff out. We're probably going to break some things along the way, but you know, ultimately, pro-innovation is the kind of mandate slogan for AI in the UK right now. The second one, I think, is make sure your voice is heard. You know, stakeholders, regulators, governments want to hear from businesses that want to use AI or who are developing AI. So I think it's super important that companies are speaking to policy folks, speaking to lawyers about these issues coming forwards. I think there was someone, someone said a very good saying to me, which I think sums it up, which is, if you're not sat on the table, that probably means you're on the menu. Thank you. <laughs>